Good morning. My name is Adrian Gonzalez. This is my partner, uh, Daniel Pico. We are Team 7, and we are working on the solar heat-powered air conditioner for the electric trolley. Uh, our advisor is uh, Dr. Tremont. And a follow-up statement, um, our project is to replace a normally compressor-driven air conditioning system for the trolley. Uh, we want to use a solar heat-powered absorption chiller system. Uh, reason being, is since the trolley is electric, we want to reduce the uh, consumption of the electrically driven compressor, eliminate that, and we'll use an energy source that is uh, freely available. So it is environmentally friendly, cost effective, it's also uh, efficient, so the solar heat uh, will be captured and that will be used to, to cause the chemical reaction, which will cause the uh, heat absorption and, and cooling for the system. The objectives are to uh, modify an existing uh, absorption chiller that we purchased uh, through, a, through a grant to integrate that absorption chiller into a together with a solar heating panel that was designed by another team uh, that would cover the roof of the trolley um, to design, fabric, and install the complete chill water and hot water systems uh, between the chiller and the fan coil and between the uh, solar co uh, heat collector and the, and the chiller and to uh, uh, apply obviously the physical principles required uh, heat transfer of thermodynamics to it. Um, uh, what of significance uh, again is to provide uh, cooling to the trolley without affecting the, uh, the driving range of the battery electric trolley. It is to uh, promote the use of, uh, of green energy, uh, freely available solar specifically, uh, to show the, the, that existing technology such as absorption chillers. Uh, which have been around for many years and still be applied in new ways uh, to show uh, efficiencies and, and improve our world and to provide the cooling comfort to the residents of Sweetwater where the trolley will, uh, will be traveling back and forth and to showcase the engineering prowess of the FIU Mechanical Engineering Department. Okay. This one I'm going to talk a little bit about the applicable standards for this project. Uh, for starters, we have the <coughs> American National Standards Institute. We also have ASHRAE. There are SAE applicable standards, and there's also the IIAR <coughs> applicable standards, as well as the governing standards from ASME and ISO. Um, next one. As mentioned previously, the design incorporates an absorption chiller, and instead of powering that the way the system was originally designed, which is to operate on gas. We decided to do a closed hot water loop so that we have options. We'll be able to tap into solar in the case where the temperature is, or rather where the temperature is below where the sun is not readily available, we can still utilize the gas because once again you're heating the hot water loop to get the same end work done. Here are some models from the design. This is a graphic representation of the absorption chiller unit. It's roughly three by four by close to five feet tall in size. The back of the trolley was actually, of this smaller trolley, it's just going to be our test bed. It's actually perfect for housing that. Um, ideally, a smaller unit would have been used, but this was the smallest available. Nice. Okay. Uh, some of our alternate designs include um, uh, replacing the refrigerant within the chiller. The, the current chiller uh, available to us was uh, powered by ammonia, an ammonia water mixture. Ideally, we would like to uh, upgrade to uh, a more efficient system like lithium bromide, which is used on the larger, more commercial scale units, but uh, due to uh, cost uh, considerations and uh, also safety of purging the ammonia and all that, it, it became a little bit too much of a task for us on, our, on this project. Um, but long term, ideally, that would be something that we would want to integrate. Uh, alternate design two would be to include, as you mentioned, a uh, hybrid hot water system in case where we don't have enough solar heat, uh, whether it be because of weather or location, we would be able to design a secondary heat exchanger in line to the, um, to the water inlet to the chiller, where we can provide uh, a gas burner to boost the, the water temperature. Now, this also design too would be an independent gas system, so we would either mount um, a removable or rechargeable tank on the trolley because it would be an independent uh, gas system for that. Uh, again, natural gas because it is cleaner burning than and gas or Alternate design three would be to integrate into the into the battery electric drive system of the trolley. So um, one of the considerations for battery electric vehicles is the cooling of the batteries and the electric motor. Uh, so similar to uh, dynamic cooling solutions, 
uh, we would run, uh, we would design a, a system where we could capture the heat coming off of the batteries and coming off of the electric motor, and also use that to uh, heat the water. So ideally, we would want to combine as many of these systems as possible. So our alternate design number four is actually, uh, it's actually all in. Would be doing to capture the heat, the heat from the electric drivetrain, to capture uh, heat from the uh, from the solar, and then also if the trolley becomes a plug-in hybrid, they would have an onboard internal combustion engine that works as a generator to charge the batteries. If the batteries run low, well, we could capture the heat from the uh, from the engine and also tap into that same tank if that generator runs on natural gas to use our booster, which would be a last case resort. So ideally, this is the design, but it depends a lot on the construction of the trolley and how the trolley goes. And so we, there's only so far that we could get with our cooling system. So our cooling system is, again, the base design of a hot water-based system. So discussing the global impact, um, there is a very, you know, a very large difference between the combusting of fossil fuels and portion more efficient fossil fuels even within that. Uh, we did a little bit of research into that and showed that for gasoline, as, even as opposed to coal, it was roughly half the amount of carbon being released. And then when you compared regular gasoline to natural gas or propane, it was a reduction by anywhere from 16 to 8%. So even more environmentally friendly. Um, of course, natural gas and propane Propane, I would think, is more readily available worldwide. Natural gas is ideal. It's available in more developed countries. Perhaps in lesser developed countries, it's difficult to get your hands on, but propane at any rate is very, you know, very efficient and very environmentally friendly compared to some other fuels. Um, and then, of course, capturing of the sun is the ultimate goal. By capturing those rays, utilizing the radiation and even conduction within a box system, you can really tap into that heat and cause the system. So very environmentally friendly. That being the uh, primary source. So, uh, here are the formulations and the calculations that were used to determine, based on the heat requirements of the generator vessel. Uh, we're going to get into more detail about that later. But from that, we had to derive: okay, what is the minimal heat exchanger we would have to we would have to design in order to make sure we're not having excessive losses? And then here are the corresponding equations to determine those losses. So of course, you're, and there at the very top, you see your governing thermodynamic equation. Whatever you put in has to go out, whether it's a loss or whether it is being used. And then of course, here is that same uh, equation expanded to show the losses to the different surfaces, the top, the bottom, and of course, the sidewall. And then finally, the radial transfer which is used for the uh, sidewall sensing cylinder. Excellent. Uh, here is an engineering drawing of the actual heat exchanger. That that would have to be assembled. We assembled it outside of it for the sake of having a visual aid, but the reality is this would have to be assembled around the generator vessel control. But you see here, 21.5 inches tall and 19 and a half inches uh, in the midsection so that it encompasses the entire exposed section of the generator. So here we see an actual picture of that exposed section that we're talking about. Um, the generator vessel comes spin. Well, originally this had a gas burner on it. And we remove this. This is where we would be putting the heat exchanger to pump the stack. So you can see how that goes together. Um, based on conversations with Rover, this is cast iron. The fin is like a giant screw, 76 turns, 19 inches long. For the purposes of simplifying our calculations and our simulation, we excluded the fin and, ex and assumed it to be a broad surface. This would give us a worst case scenario because of the fin, you could expect performance to increase ever so slightly. But it also makes it a lot easier to model. And here you see a still from the simulation showing the water entering at the requisite temperature and this midsection actually reaching the requisite temperature that the wall should be based on the calculations. And finally, we have a video of that simulation so you can see it sort of unfurled. This was showing for, for pressure. Um, 
the result of the temperature. The still was of temperature, but in case of pressure, you can see that there's an overall increase of only of about one psi with this, this, uh, with this design. It was very simple. Could be optimized a little bit better, perhaps, for performance sake when we play. But um, we feel confident that keeping it simple is the way to go, at least for this first step of the overall project. So as for the build, this was our uh, cheddar disassembly. Um, it came as a finished product. You saw a picture earlier on of the rover product finish. So uh, we removed all the panels, took everything apart as, as best we could uh, until we got down to the bare bones. This system, we chose the rover. Number one, it was uh, one of the few commercially available in, in, in the smaller sizes. But number two, it was laid out in a way that was ideal for our trolley, and you'll see that on another slide. So as he mentioned, here's the generator section, which is where the magic happens, where we have to provide the heating in order for the system to work. Um, in here is a built-in chill water pump, here's a control panel. So um, this is a, the actual trolley that we are that FIU is uh, building. Uh, again, we, we modeled the entire system, including the area where we're going to be where we're going to be installing the chiller. All right. The chiller is a uh, it's an air cooled model. It uh, has a condenser coil, which is the larger uh, black section on the side. So, um, in order to avoid cutting into the ammonia circuit and exposing uh, ourselves to, to additional risks, um, it was a tr strategic decision between us and our and our advisor uh, to use the entire back space of that trolley, since there was no seating area, there was no access to that area, um, and make that a mechanical plenum. So, on top of that goes this uh, sheet metal uh, exhaust plenum, which goes um, tried in here and then ties into louvers, which of course are on the side opposite where the passengers get onto the trolley. traffic side of the street as opposed to the intake side. louvers into that mechanical section will be on the side of the uh, of the passengers getting on and off. Alright, here is where the chiller is actually installed in the trolley. Again, you can see we partitioned off the area in the back. So like, everything is serviceable, all the connections here, water valves are on this side, here's the generator, the entire system is serviceable from the back of the trolley, with no issues there. This is uh, the chilled water fan coil uh, installed inside the trolley. Again, this back area is no seating. It was an area that was left out. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't close that off just so that you can see the, uh, the chilled uh, chill water fan coil installed. This could be up inside of these. Right. And then for the uh, budget, you see here the cost of the absorption chiller was $6,500. Water pumps, $1,000. Chilled water fan coil, $2,000. And miscellaneous piping, wire insulation, and even the weldings for this prototype all together about $4,000. So total just for purchase of product, uh, $13,500 for the materials of this prototype. And then of course when you include uh, uh, the cost of labor, 160 work hours, five hours per week times 32 weeks, comes out to another six thousand, almost seven thousand dollars. Altogether, you're looking at a twenty thousand one hundred dollar bill. Uh, so, as for the financing, the chiller was purchased through the help of a local air conditioning company by the name of AMP Air Conditioning. Uh, the Ashbury Mining Chapter chapter was also very uh, helpful by issuing some grants towards this project. And Rover was also able to knock down the price in the first place to make the absorption chiller even more obtainable. And lastly, Multi Aqua is the company that donated the, uh, the, fan coil, the fan coil, the output side of the AC system. So they also thought it was great. One quick note on Rover. Uh, you'll see uh, when we negotiated the price with Rover, we uh, had to include two modules, two control modules. One of them is straight for the hot water uh, design. So uh, the way of the, that we built the project, we also uh, negotiated with them to include a second module which would also uh, control the gas should we go with that uh, upgraded option in the Plug future. We already have the uh, second control module. Right. Here you see a brief timeline of this note of the project. Um, okay, so project formulation took about two months. Research and the literature survey took about an additional three or four months. Conceptual design. The analysis and the manufacturing took the most amount of time. You can see those there respectively. From this one to that one. And then finally, the, uh, well, as far as validation, we were not able to validate because part of the system, as mentioned earlier, is that solar collector. And that was not 
available to, to be installed. Right. There, there was a, uh, a second senior design team uh, previously that designed and built a prototype, but it's a small scale. It's not large enough to produce the heat that we need to do a physical test, so we were limited to our simulations, which proved to, to work even though they were a simplified version. Our system would actually be more efficient because of the fins. And then finally, to wrap this all up, so future considerations for the project. Um, currently, we have the AC system installed to the back, and we have this heat exchanger. An ideal scenario would be two things. The first is to go ahead and build a, build a bench system where we test purely the heat exchanger and make sure that it is up to scratch. So far, the math says it'll work, and the simulation says it'll work, but there's nothing like some good old-fashioned bench testing. But in order to do that, whether it's we have it mounted to the trolley or we do separate bench testing, we still need that solar collector to be built to spec. So that has to happen first. On the other end, just by having the AC unit already installed, we can accommodate other, uh, other portions of the project in the future. The propane burner system and the exhaust scavenging can be included. And of course, we'll be able to test, even with this large unit, although that's kind of overkill for the trolley space, based on the numbers, and like collecting temperature and pressure readings within the cabin of the trolley, and also losses after opening and closing the doors, we'd be able to more properly size a custom built unit that would be proportional to this task. So, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you enjoy. So, walk me through your design, your problem statement. You said design and install a solar heating power absorption chiller. Did you design it? Uh, we, we did design the, uh, the heat exchanger, as we mentioned in our, in our especially in our report. Not, um, part of our project is to use uh, commercially available um, uh, starting point. So we started with this gas fire chiller, and we designed the, the heat exchange uh, transition to make it a, a hot water heat exchanger. Uh, we worked with Rover to um, to ensure the temperatures necessary uh, to to get that system to function, uh, but. The purpose was to take, again, an existing technology and upgrade it, convert it to an, a more energy efficient, a, a green energy Okay. Design. Were you able to install it? Yes. That's, that's the actual trolley. That's the actual chiller. The actual chiller is in the system? Too. Yes. That's that is that is the actual trolley and the actual chiller in the so yard of the other here? company. Is, is this, okay. this is, okay. right. this, this is the heat exchanger that goes around here. Now, if I would have installed it there, I wouldn't have been able to bring it here to, yeah. to show you. So again, I can, we can pull it out, we can slide it back, we can slide it in. This part here, this, uh, this top flange, is what gets uh, welded to the top of the, um, of the generator, uh, or sorry, to, to the midsection of the generator above the fins. And this bottom part is what slides in. And then this is a, um, this is a high temperature gasket that so we'll be able to seal the entire system out. Uh, then you want to yeah, I'll, I'll talk about well, I, I have more questions for you. Okay, sure. One more for you. Uh, you also stated that it should have no infect, effect on driving range. Do you have any work or any data to support or not support that statement? Uh, no work on that. Basically, the, the idea being that we've completely removed the electrically driven compressor. Yeah, the demand. So, so we've removed the demand from the, from the, uh, from the battery. So we've actually, uh, by default, improved the driving range. Of the system. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, and then que the question I have for you is tied to cost benefit analysis and payback um, tied to natural gas, solar, um, the IC, you know, using internal combustion engine heat. Um, how would you contrast those uh, to tell me what would be the best answer? Okay, well, the answer involves testing. The first is we already know what the consumption of this absorption chiller is because it's commercially available. There's a lot of data and a lot of information already available. We have that from Rover. We have the manual. 95,000 BTUs an hour. So with that and knowing the cost of natural gas and propane, you could actually set up a table. Granted, we didn't go this far because we felt it was kind of out of scope. We focused our attention to what are those needs and how do we address that. But this would be the next logical step, which is your question. So lay out that table and you say, okay, it costs this much up front and then down the road operating this system, here's how much it costs. So now the question becomes, all right, so we talked about exhaust scavenge and we talked about the solar collector. 
once those are built and integrated to the system, there is a certain amount of basically thermal load, or not thermal load, but thermal power that they're going to contribute to the system. The more both of those systems contribute, that starts to lean you off of the gas. So what you're going to do end up is end up actually showing, doing it straight up with the gas versus having it with those other systems integrated. Um, just from looking at the numbers and the fact that natural gas and propane are much cheaper than, um, rather they're cheap to begin with compared to outright electricity, the difference there was probably close to 30%, just from looking at the basically per kilowatt amount. The number escapes me now, but it was, it was roughly 30%. Now you include those other sources, the sun and the exhaust scavenge, and then you can really start to drop that down. So it is something that you can recuperate costs and even at some point generate income, I believe, in a reasonable time frame. Um, granted, we'll have to lay and map that all out, but I feel confident just based on the cost of those energies, it's very doable. Great answer. Thank you. Hello. Can I mention one more thing? Um, you had asked us during our Senior 1 project specifically to, uh, to address the, uh, the chiller within the trolley, the vibrations and all that. And I don't know if, um, it's, in the, it's in the report, due to limited time, we were, uh, we're not able to address it during our presentation. But you'll notice here real quick, we did address specifically um, calculations as far as support, uh, as far as suspension, as far as uh, um, you know, an entire structural design, and, and, and it is listed in the report. So I wanted to make sure that super specifically. Yeah. No, <laughs> that we did. We did look at that and address it because it was super. It was a good question from Adam. Thank you. Well, they remind you of course. Any other comments? We're running short. Yes, please. Is the vehicle working yet? Um, does it run? Does the motor work? No, the trolley itself is not running. It's a. It's a. It's supposed to be a battery electric trolley, but the trolley itself is not motion system. Okay, so you're going to have to make sure that's working, or your exactly. air conditioning is just going to sit there, oh, air well. conditioning a non-moving vehicle. Absolutely. Well, okay. Eventually, and number two, yeah, have you checked out the weight when yeah. it was operational about three years ago? Uh, it's really heavy because it's made out of marine plywood. Yeah. Now, the marine plywood used was the kind of marine plywood used in full-sized trolley. This is the only known existing small trolley that's right. built on a, as a rubber tire electric vehicle. But they didn't change the spec in the wood. So yeah. this thing's heavier than it should be. Yeah. As you add weight to it, you're going to have a problem of it climbing over the most modest of hills, such as the bridge at 109th and uh, Sweetwater, which is a very important thing to be able to cross over. No, absolutely. And, and, and specifically, we looked at, at the uh, weight distribution at the uh, at the suspension, so uh, there there are currently um, more calculations being run as far as um, as far as the the uh, uh, suspension, the tires, uh, whether it's organized rubber or whatever. Now, as but far as propulsion, you getting over the link. See that wheel? Mm -hmm. See the back end? Yes. That back end is going to hit the road every time it crosses, even a slight incline. Right. We either have to reduce the length of the vehicle from the back, or B, you've got to find some way. To jack it up so they can get over those hurdles. Real quick, one of the things that we looked at um, and, and we wanted to do during this project, if you notice on the on the disassembly of the airbags. Okay, this is the condenser uh, coil section. This section here is all empty. It's just the coil looping around. This is the is the heart of our system. So. Uh, we wanted to remove this. We wanted to modify the trolley, run the lines all the way to the front, make you know replace it with some kind of a radiator in the front. But again, it was a better a distribute the weight, right? And it would have been a complete modification of, of the trolley. We would have opened up the ammonia <clears throat> piping, and so it was you know for for cost and safety concerns, it was a, a strategic decision not to do that, not, not to, to modify it, not because, to do it yet. Right. Not to do it not yet. yet. I'm not going to say not to do it, but not to do it yet. Like, because a lot of, of the space yet. available I agree. in the trolley. Yeah, correct. So, it was an abandoned area that was not for passengers. It was it's an ongoing project. It, 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 one it's step the back end of the trolley you're talking about. Yes. yes. It is, it, the unit fits completely behind the wheel well okay. of the, uh, the rear wheel. One more question. Um, have you spec'd out whether the photovoltaic panel on the roof will be sufficient? 
to run the air conditioner. It's not. It's, it's not going to be photovoltaic. It's going to be a solar collector. A solar collector is you basically have a box with okay. plumbing, you know, running through it. The water passes through. The sun hits it, heats it up. The box is super insulated. Surfaces are painted to absorb as much as possible. Um, other renditions uh, that we were looking at, including the prototype that's upstairs, incorporate a reflective surface to help bounce some of the rays. So back if it's solar, up. how does the solar help your air conditioning work? Because the way the system the, the system originally works is you heat that finned portion right here of the generator vessel, which is encased up here by insulation. So your hot water is driving. Exactly. Yes. Whereas exactly. before it was direct heat, we had to do the calculation backwards and say, okay, if the temperature in the core has to be 305 degrees Fahrenheit, which is what Rover told us, and if that delivery has to be at 95,000 BTUs an hour, what does an equivalent hot water do? So I, now that I understand, have you got enough solar on the roof? So no. your air well, well, the answer is actually is actually yes. The there was another senior design team that designed already the the solar collector for the roof. Unfortunately, for our project, their final prototype was a reduced size prototype for so proof of concept. It but it's, so it's just not big enough for us that's, to test. Well, that's why house. I said no. Their, their system works, but yes, it, but that, not on this scale. It's not ready. So if you have to increase the scale. Mm -hmm. size of the solar on the roof. Will it then work? Yes. Okay. We're confident that I just have an issue. Thank you. By the way, I'm building it.